In the mountains of the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh, the ruins of a six-year separatist armed struggle are a stark reminder of a bloody past. The war between local ethnic Armenians, supported by Armenia, and Azerbaijan ended with a ceasefire in 1994, yet a lasting peace deal was never signed. The region's self-declared sovereignty is not recognized by any country, and the 150,000 people here can only travel to Armenia unless they apply for an Armenian passport. With trade, travel and educational opportunities limited, the region's youth are in danger of falling behind. With its white neon lights and row after row of new Apple computers, this after-school training center epitomizes the aspiration of the region to emerge from the isolation that has cloaked it for more than two decades. The goal, to level up an entire generation of Armenians. 21st century uh, skills from robotics to motion graphics, 3D modeling to animation, drawing, digital music. Uh, we deeply believe that they will need to be uh, multi-skilled uh, and um, techy and artsy a little bit as well uh, so that they can compete on the marketplace tomorrow. With most of the world off limits to youth here, centers like these feed their hopes that they do have a place and a future in the global community. Today's political leaders who carried the weight of the independence movement 20 years ago say they look with hope to their youth. These days we have a talented youth who we fully trust. I believe that this generation is even more talented than we were and it is our responsibility to pass on to them all our experience of the past 30 years so that they continue what we started. The leaders of Nagorno-Karabakh say they have learned to coexist with conflict. They have worked to build functioning institutions and planned for a day when the world recognizes the country they call the Republic of Artsakh. But it can be costly. They have a national soccer team, but without recognition by soccer bodies, they find few opportunities to play abroad. It also has an international airport built in 2011. But the one thing missing here are the planes. Azerbaijan has warned it can't guarantee the safety of flights to Nagorno-Karabakh, so neatly stacked luggage trolleys, check-in desks and an air traffic control tower remain idle. The government claims Azerbaijan attempts to isolate the territory, describing this as akin to a human rights violation. Artsakh citizens are deprived of opportunities to visit other countries. From this perspective, the countries that we are trying to establish conversations with ignore our rights of living on this planet and create barriers for us. If conflict is the canvas on which Karabakh Armenians are building their future, the picture they hope to create is one of peace and prosperity. David Keaton for the Associated Press in Nagorno-Karabakh.